Now, Deb, you've designed these workouts so that people could do them at the gym, but also really quite nice and easy to do them at home. What sort of equipment do people need? Ideally, something like a yoga mat, but most people have carpet or even a rug at home or a mat, so it's fine to do on the floor. I've given, done some exercises with a Swiss ball. A lot of people have a Swiss ball at home. And we're going to, a bit later on, use some of the blocks, but you can even just use a stair or even a telephone book. It's fantastic. A lot of people, you're right, do have Swiss balls at home, but I think one thing that's quite confusing is what sizes to choose because there are a different variety of sizes. How do we know? Because uh, you're sitting on a smaller one than me. Ideally, you want if you're buying a Swiss ball, you want to get a Swiss ball so when you're sat on, your knees are at a 90-degree angle. Now, there are exercises that you do when it's easier to have a bigger ball or more difficult to have a bigger ball and vice versa. But essentially, for the majority of exercises, and if you're using the Swiss ball at home as a chair, you want to have that 90 degree angle. As a general rule, you tend to say if you're around five foot to five foot five, you'd want 55 centimeter Swiss ball. About five foot five to six foot, 65 centimeter, and above six foot, 75 centimeter. Now, what is often referred to as pear shape is a trouble zone for a lot of Kiwi women in particular. And that's when we p- mainly distribute our weight and fatty areas around our hips and thighs. So, can you give us a brief rundown of the kind of things that we'll be working on today? The exercises I've given are for the legs, but rather than doing quite heavy exercises you might do in the gym, which if you are the pear shaped, unfortunately you will tend to increase the size of your muscles. These are more toning exercises that I've designed to actually reshape the muscles. So you can have redefinition around the knee and into your bottom. So you're just walking with a bit more confidence, knowing that your legs look good and got better shape to them. This first exercise is the crossover step. It's really good for reshaping the legs. It picks up that area on the inside of the knees that we often quite, find quite flabby and also it retones through your bottom, helps stabilising and reducing lower back pain as well. So you want to stand. I'm using blocks, but stairs are fantastic or even a couple of telephone books. You want to have your hips facing to the block. You're stepping one foot on and as you step up, crossing over. Lower that leg behind and bring it up again. The main thing you need to do as you cross that leg behind is make sure the hips stay facing the front. What a lot of people tend to do is as they're crossing their legs, they go diagonally, which won't have that same toning and reshaping benefits of the exercise. So if you can't cross your legs as much as I have, bring them a little bit less. Even just having one foot in front of the other, exactly the same thing. Just pushing up and releasing. And you should find you're feeling it either through the inside of the knee or into the bottom. A lot of people with these leg exercises, the first time they do them, they tend to find they might cramp through the calf muscle or into the foot arch. And that's just an instability. So it's, you have to make sure you're keeping your foot as relaxed as possible. A lot of people claw through the toes as they're coming up because they're not used to balancing on one leg. So that's going to lead to foot cramping and lead to calf ache. This exercise is for your bottom. It's for back and pelvic stability. You want to lie in a straight line with the upper body. The knees are bent, the feet come slightly behind the body, the knees come slightly in front. It's a very popular exercise with physios. You might have been given a slightly different variation with the foot positioning, don't worry about it. You can either do what the physio showed you or do it as I've showed you. What I tend to do is lift the feet up into the air so you're tipping the hips forward slightly so you're getting a strong emphasis into your bottom. Keeping the feet together, the toes as relaxed, As you exhale, squeeze open, using your bottom, you can feel your bottom working, opening the knee as wide as you can, and then releasing down. With these ones, I'd do as many repetitions as you can, because you get a really good workout through your bottom. So some of you might tire around 10, others might get to 15, others might get to about 20. It's quite normal to find that one side hurts more than the other, because we've all got a dominant leg. If you do really notice a difference, then perhaps you should go to a physio or an osteopath and just get checked out that you haven't got any instabilities between both sides in the exercises. Okay, this exercise.
exercise is for your hamstrings and for your bottom, I just call it hamstring raise. You want to line your back in a neutral pelvis. So you've got again, you've got a slight arch into your lower back, so your hip bones are level with the bone at the base of the body. By that I mean parallel, and then you're not pulled into your abdominals and rounding through your lower back. From there, lying in that position, squeeze your bottom and raise your bottom up into the air. So you've got a direct lift and release. What you don't want to do is find that as you're squeezing, you roll, because that's a different exercise. Okay, we're trying to isolate the um, bottom and the hamstrings. So find that neutral pelvis position, squeeze into your bottom and raise up. As you get more stability in these exercises, you might find you place one foot in the air and you just do one leg. And then changing legs over. And doing the same thing on the other side. Another variation of this exercise, and they're quite good to put together, is when you've done about six repetitions of the first one, holding it up, staying tight through your bottom so you don't cramp through the back of the legs, and slowly extend out. As you breathe out, bring the feet back in. What people tend to do wrong with this exercise is they tend to have the feet quite rigid, which means you'll cramp through the calf muscles. If you look at my feet, they're quite relaxed. The toes are just flopping down. I'm not in this position. If you're in that position, you'll find that your calf muscles ache before the rest of your body. A really advanced progression. If you want to, you can do exactly the same thing on one leg. What you need to make sure with the one leg exercises is as you raise that leg, you're keeping your hip bones level. If you're weak or if you've got an imbalance between sides, you find you drop to one side, which means you're better off just sticking to the exercise in its original form, which is just pushing out and releasing. And then pressing out and in. If you want a little bit of a burn to this exercise, it's quite good to do six lifts of the first one, then six pressing out, and then for your final burn, come onto your toes and just lower the bottom down as much as you can and raise. You'll really feel it towards the end. This is the cycle step. Like the crossover, this is great for picking up that flabby area through the inside of the knees and for your pelvic hip stability. So just for complete reshaping of the leg muscles. What you need to do is either on a low step or a block or the telephone books like I am, place your hands onto your hips and just about stabilizing on one leg. Keeping your hips level, staying lifted through your pelvic floor muscles, you're gonna slowly lower down and press up. This is the start of the exercise. If you can do that quite stable, then bring the toe down in front, drag the foot along the floor and bring it up. It's like a one-legged bicycle cycle. The main things to remember is the direction of the knee. It helps improve knee stability. What you don't want to find is you're rocking in and out. So they're really good to do in front of a mirror. So you're just bending down and coming up. The other thing to look for is that you don't drop through the hips. So make sure you're working this knee at the leg that's on the block. So going down and cycling. If I was doing this, I'd probably progress it slightly higher, just to advance the move, but I wouldn't really go higher than that. So that's about my sort of lower area of my shin that I'm going to, just below my calf muscle. That's about as high as I would go. I'm lowering down and cycling round. If I went any higher, I'd start dropping through my hips, which is a long exercise. This exercise is great for the inner thighs. It's also really, really good for that abdominal control. You want to lie behind your Swiss ball, placing your knee on top of the Swiss ball. You can even do this on a block, so it's slightly lower down. As I'm pressing down with this top leg, I can feel it tightening through my abdominal area. 
And then from there, I'm squeezing up and raising my lower leg. So I'm squeezing the two legs towards each other, but feeling a really tight contraction through my abdominals as well. If you don't want to hold your head up, it's fine just to rest it down. But make sure you breathe out as you bring the leg up so you get that perfect. Like the other leg exercises, you can build up to about 20 repetitions of this, so you get a really fatigue through the muscles. Okay, this exercise is for your bottom. You'll also get a little bit of strength through the lower back muscles, a little bit of work through the back of the legs as well. You need to put your belly button at the top of the ball. So lying onto your front, my belly button goes to the center, so I'm just resting. You can rest my toes down to the floor, I'm resting on the fingertips. Then, just squeeze your bottom and raising up. What people tend to do wrong with this exercise, they come too far forwards and they're using momentum to squeeze the legs up, which is working my lower back, but it's also not too good for your lower back. So bring it back to the centre of the board, so you've got a good straight back, and then squeezing up, and releasing. Once you've done a few, just rest back, hug the ball, it's really nice, it helps to rest off through your back muscles, and you can even just roll from side to side. And then it's quite a good exercise to do a second set, so bring yourself to the same position, and this time widen the legs. So as you come out and you're squeezing the legs out to the side, you'll find it working into your bottom a lot more. If anyone doesn't like resting onto their hands, there's no problem resting onto your fists. Again, you can do between about 10 to 20 of these reps, so you get a good workout in the muscles without it hurting. And again, when you're finished, just roll back and just round over the ball.